rock singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore podcast. I'm your old buddy, old pal, Jr. the Handler, and in the chair across from me on the Zoom machine today is none other than Country Music Zone, Mr. Justin Moore, my brother. What's up, JM? Hey, buddy. Uh, good to talk to you. Good to be back with everybody. And um, we are uh, we're excited today. We got a one of our favorite people in the world coming on. Yes. Uh, Priscilla Block, which we've talked yes. about having on for a while now, and um, then finally get to chat with her. Uh, and you guys, uh, I'm sure you do know of her and know her stuff, but it'll be a lot of fun to to chat with her today. Um, no doubt. And uh, we'll tell you guys <clears throat> maybe when she's uh, she's off here about a great experience that we just had out in Colorado on an elk hunt and, um, uh, and get ready to wrap up the, the year, man. So yep. that's, you know, we love coming out and playing for you guys, but it's also uh, really exciting when you get to this point in the year and you're going, okay, Thanksgiving's coming up yeah. and Christmas is coming yeah. up. <laughs> Almost three months off is coming up. Yeah. You just got to so, recharge. You just got to recharge yeah. the batteries. You know, I was listening yeah. to a podcast the other day. It was Rob Lowe's podcast, which is pretty, pretty good. Um, but he had Bernie Toppin, famous songwriter, Elton John's partner, wrote all yeah. the songs with Elton. And he was talking how he hadn't been on the road since, you know, after they really got big, because he said the touring part was just will drain you. He said that it said he yeah. would fly into the, some of the shows and this and that. And, you know, it, it just takes a different animal to do that part. And, um, and, and like you said, you know, at a certain point, it's just like, you got to recharge the batteries cause it is grueling and, and grinding it yeah. out on and air planes, trains and automobiles. But, uh, but well, it's been fun. Of, yeah. The, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say, but then you, you also got though, that it's like, you got that little thing. So that gives you that little extra boost in the end of the year to have good shows and go, you know, rock because you're like, all right, we're going to get a little break, recharge the batteries, reset. So it's just, uh, yeah, you're always super excited to, to start your break and take, take the break. Cause you get to be home with family and, you know, in your case, your, your wife and mom and nephew and brother and grandma and aunt and all that. In my case, you know, wife and kids and, um, and as we've discussed on here, it's not like we're gone all the time. We have a pretty a pretty easy schedule all things considered uh comparatively speaking to not only what we've done in the past but what a lot of other people do mm -hmm. uh but it's still a lot man um and so to have the opportunity to be here uh not four or five days at a time but you know weeks months at a time is 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 a lot of fun and you know, to do the hol do it through the holidays like we do is is awesome because you don't you don't really have to worry about missing that kind of stuff because we miss so many things throughout the year, whether it be weddings or you know that kind of stuff. And but um, you go miss even, some birthdays, Dewey. Hell, you go yeah, miss some yeah, births. Um, <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not gonna make them all. I'm just, <laughs> I just like them. even for me, I'm famous. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, but that's from Dewey Cox, uh, walk hard. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. I mean, especially if you're a mu musician, you'll really understand the little, I don't know, nuances yeah. more so than if you didn't, but it's great yeah. either way. But, um, but no, uh, even with our schedule being kind of formed in a way where we can control a lot of it, not all of it. Um, it's still, man, it's, it's mentally and emotionally and f physically, but I would say exhausting is where I was going with that. Yeah. But I would say more mentally and emotionally than it is physically. I mean, yes, it's physically exhausting Absolutely. when you're in different time zones and, uh, you know, going through airports and all this and that. And look, we understand how fortunate we are to do what we do, but it's still tiring. I mean, it wears yeah. you down kind of to your point, but. And it's almost the I think opposite. mentally and it, emotionally, it's more so draining oh, than it is physically. Absolutely. Honestly. 
especially now when you get a little older because it's not the booze making you feel bad anymore it's just you you're just getting old you're <laughs> yeah getting feeble yeah, exactly but uh but you know and too in the in the uh having the energy thing it's kind of like uh, uh the opposite because you can almost get yourself so lethargic you're tired because unless you force yourself to do something yeah. you're just uh, you're, I'm, you're sitting in an no, airplane you're sitting in the bus often i know and i mean i just have to get up and go it's like a dog uh doing zoomy sometimes you just got to get up and move because i feel like i've sat here you know well sometimes we don't have a choice we're on the bus for 14 hours straight we're just right you know i do a push-up or two but i, I mean what you know so anyway right. but hey i think it's we got her coming on uh-oh hi uh oh, hey goodness. there she is <laughs> what's up i'm kara zagorski i guess right now <laughs> <laughs> you're I was awesome wondering. Yeah, she's a kick-ass assistant. Now she looks like a, a kick-ass artist right now. Oh my, she's amazing. She's really amazing. <laughs> how long? She, how long she been with you? There were y'all. Y'all were buddies before, right? Yeah. So we. Um. It's actually kind of funny. We. I met her. Just she used to write songs, and at one point in her life, she was thinking she might be an artist. And uh, I had a girlfriend, and she was like, "I'm going to write with these two country." sisters today would you want to hop on and Kara was like one of my first rights in Nashville and I showed up to her apartment and she like she was like sicker than ever like I'm pretty sure she had like a tampon up her nose and I was like this girl is my <laughs> best friend and so yeah it was kind of crazy and then obviously after everything happened with me um she I was like dude I I'm building my team. The only job that I have right now is I need a tour manager. And she's like, well, I don't even know what that is, but I'll figure it out. And I'll do it. <laughs> so needless to say that, you know, I'm really glad that she's not tour managing me anymore. Cause you know, you kind of need someone that, that has been doing that for a little bit, but she, yeah. she did it. So, oh, so awesome. what's her official title then? You know, we actually have been trying to figure that out. Cause she's like, <laughs> ask me what I do. And I'm like, I don't even know what I do. I do. She's got a lot of hats. That um, actually, that sounds like when I, uh, I hired Jr. Um, party was out on the road with us, and Jr. was uh, tour manager for for him. And this was in, I think, fourteen, maybe thirteen, ten years ago. Thirteen. Okay. Um, and I go, man, I don't really have a position, but like, I, I gotta have you. I don't even know what you're going to do. And it just kind of morphed into like, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Like, buddy, like to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, I need some friends. Can I another, pay you on the road? <laughs> yeah, another got to dress like me. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it just kind of did a little bit of everything. Yeah, fashion court. Hey, uh, that would be one of Kara's. Sure, she's a uh, team leader of the glam squad, no doubt. She, that, she puts on the eyelashes. Yep. No, I mean, I think that this life gets crazy and you just have to have people around. And sometimes it's not exactly knowing what that role is. R role is. Kara's like, I am here to help. Just tell me what to do. Yeah. I mean, she is very fan focused. Like she handles our VIPs and like the fans know Kara. They're like, Kara, can you give this to Priscilla? Can you give this to her? And she's like, guys, I, I have a job here. Right. Um, but no, I mean, most, she, she kind of most important it. thing. Will she tell you no? yeah that's great perfect that's what you need that's jr will tell me i mean we'll get into about stuff but i mean that's i, I take that as a good i mean it's a good thing you know yeah. that I you think don't have people around you going oh yeah that's a great idea yeah you yeah, can't you gotta you have do, I mean, you gotta you can't have too many yes people because they're gonna be enough of them you gotta have somebody that shoots you straight you just have to yeah, yeah and having somebody that just knows you so or, much like i mean i've had oh there goes my light. Oh man. <laughs> Ring light down. The intro uh teaser to the episode. That's it. There you go. <laughs> we have Priscilla. Oh. I will okay. say I think you've um I think you've dressed better than anybody that's ever been on here. No I, doubt. Uh I can definitely uh, well I wouldn't say, I, I I I take pride in my fashion sense. Clearly uh, I do not. You know, I, I'm just like the trashier, the better. That's kind of where <laughs> I'm at, you know? I love it. So, I love I love all your sayings, all your stuff, thick thighs, save lives, <laughs> yeah, they sass do. and ass. You, you nail all baby. that. And 
I love it. You own it. I love it so much. You're so fab. I love it so much. I meant to text uh, you the other day, actually. We're we're in the car. It's me and I don't think it was all the kids. I think I went and got them from school. But I think it was maybe just uh I think it was maybe my son and my eleven and six year old daughters. And uh I'm, I keep hearing this song. There's my young, my nine year old keeps singing this song, and I'm like, "How do I know that song?" Like, <laughs> and it, it, she was singing, um, "Golly, I knew I was gonna forget." One of the first songs you do in in your show, um, my bar. No, it's not my Off bar. The deep end. No, Fake, it's another uh, tempo though. Okay, tempo. Uh, ever since uh, you left. I think that might have been it. I think it was one of the first two or three you play in your show. Yeah. I've seen your show a hundred times. Wow. And I'm like, oh, and I'm like, (laughs) and I meant to text you uh, and say, hey, FYI, I was trying to uh, like audio record it, but they were all being too loud. I couldn't. But anyway, so certainly made an impression on my nine year old. We fans, we don't care how old (laughs) you are. Like, yeah, we don't discriminate here. Okay. If it's but a it nine-year-old out. singing, and this it, is my bar, I love it. Yeah, and it was some, like, inappropriate thing that she shouldn't have been singing. I forget what it was. It might have been kids this love my that. bar. It, Maybe it you might can have kiss been my ass. Now. Um, but either way, it was it was funny because, I, you know, I used to have a song called I Could Kick Your Ass. And, and, oh. and I would have uh, parents come up and be like, I hate to tell you this, but this is his favorite song. And I'm like, I am so sorry. I don't even, I don't even know what to tell you. Quit playing that for them. I, oh you my know, god! <laughs> well, you got I can kick your ass, and I got you can kiss my ass. So <laughs> yeah. honestly, I if that you know if I'm going down the same road, honestly, I'm yeah. really proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I, mean, I was proud of them. I was like, yes. They're not playing Taylor Swift and singing right. Taylor Swift. They're singing Priscilla. <laughs> yes, PB. No awesome. doubt. They, got, they got to have a little sass in them. Okay. It's right. it's funny how kids gravitate toward that. We all did it too. I love, I used to love the, when I was uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, I loved the NWA, the two live crew, the trashiest stuff and any kind of song that would say anything kind of a curse word, even in a country song, if they said hell or damn or something, you love that, you know, it's just oh, yeah. weird. How hey, yeah. I hear a million I words. The- but if you say one curse word around a kid, that's what they're going to say in front of the <laughs> next adult they run into. And when they ask yeah. you where they heard it, they're going to point to you. And you're like, I said a billion things. I said one little, you know, curse word. I think, I was, I, think I was 12, 13 years old and bought the Get a Grip tape, Aerosmith, <laughs> because it was a cow's udder with a piercing. <laughs> and I was like... I, this is badass. I just to see a piercing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. Uh, on a cow's tit. Oh yeah. I mean, it was all, it's like, yeah, it's so I disgusting. can't imagine anything better. Wow. <laughs> hey, well, PB, he was talking about his kids singing young and I don't want to, I don't want this is definitely not an interview interview. It's just a hang sesh, but I know there are a okay. few people that may not know about the story of PB yet. Like we do. And if you've, if you're living under a rock, go to a PB show soon, come see us, see her with us the next couple of weeks. But her show is fantastic. I promise you, you know, I'll shoot you straight. If you go to a PB show, you will not be disappointed. I don't care what gender or age you are. You will enjoy the show, but, uh-huh. um, like his kids doing that when you were young, did, did you have family members that played or sang? How'd you get into singing? Did you sing at church? Did you just like to sing when you were little? How'd all that start? So I, I, um, actually, not everyone might not know this, but I was raised a pastor's kid. So that oh, probably, I believe it. it probably makes a lot more sense now. It, a lot of country. I view, I've, I've heard this. It. Yep. This makes yep, a lot of so sense. My first my girlfriend was-, was a preacher's kid. Oh, she was crazy. I bet she was crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, she, yeah. Hey, at Some least things like, hadn't changed either. At least it's fun, you know? But, um, Well, so anyways, my dad was a pastor and we had, he started this church and it was like really small. I mean, like small, like we were the pastor's kids. Like my brother was running the sound system, had never ran a sound system in his life. My sister's teaching Sunday school. Me and my mom are singing worship. Like, At what age is your sister teaching Sunday school? She's probably like 14. What? Yes. 
Dude, it was oh so, God. yeah, it was so special. But like, you know, my daddy's like, y'all gonna work. Like, yeah, figure it out. <laughs> it. You know, my, my brother's like passing out communion, just like taking a little bit more, you know, for himself. <laughs> like it was just, and anytime like we would want to go to a party on a Saturday night, my mom would be like, okay, y'all can go. But everyone that's at that party has to come and show up to church tomorrow. And so my brother wow. would bring all of his friends. They were all hung over at church and they're sitting there. But no, my mom, um, I always like loved to sing. And my mom was like, can you like, will you do this with me? And I mean, it was you were how old? How old was this? Gosh. I mean, maybe 14. So mm-hmm. or teenager, early teenager, yeah, early teenager. Gotcha. So, that's where you course, got like, that's where you got selling an audience and marketing from is Getting all those uh, hoodlums to church. <laughs> yeah, Sunday. exactly. You were, party you were, to church you were, Sunday. You were filling up venues even before you knew you were filling <laughs> up venues. No, it's, it's been a journey since day mm-hmm. one. Let me just That's say. so awesome. Half of it was like a retirement home. Like, I mean, it, it was great. But and anyway. this is in North, this is in North Carolina? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I started singing with my mom at church. And I used to do like talent shows and stuff growing up. But when it really like changed is um, we had another guy that would like step in. He would do worship. His name was Johnny Orr and he had a band in North Carolina and they would play all around and he'd be like, Priscilla, like you should come out and like sing with me. And like, I'm like, hell yeah. From the church to the bar, let's go baby. (laughs) And so I'd like show up to these bars and my dad would take me like, and we would just, you know, it, it was, God, I think about so much. I know my people are like, wow, her family is truly crazy. But we were like, we would be on church at church on Sunday. And then my dad would be bringing me to the bar to sing. And it was just so I, I started singing with him and um, where it all like I was like, oh, I'm I'm dead set on this. I picked up a guitar and, you know, my parents had me in piano lessons growing up. And I I was the worst piano kid, like would never practice and you know whatever but my mom knew that there was like some sort of music thing in me and um I picked up a guitar and I started just I couldn't ask for guitar lessons like my family was kind of broke and piano went down south um so I I just started going on YouTube and teaching myself how to play guitar and I was like learning all these Taylor Swift songs and like obviously she was like We'll edit that out. Do what? We'll edit that out. Okay. (laughs) But I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I I don't even know who y'all are talking about. Who is Taylor? Yeah. I I, I don't know if y'all know. (laughs) (laughs) But I just start that was, you know, she was the young girl at the time that was kind of like, I mean, bigger than anything. And yeah. Kind of your age, the whole deal. Yeah. Like I found like myself in those songs and um anyway so I started writing I didn't even know how to write by yourself by myself at home Mm -hmm. and like some kids I I think that they write in diaries or do whatever I was writing songs so did you get anything really good out of those songs because I did the same type of thing as far as writing I started writing by myself (laughs) and boy were they awful I mean looking back on they were terrible yeah you know I no, mean, PB probably wrote I am like my ones. biggest fan, guys. <laughs> you probably did. You probably wrote some great stuff that turned into great. Like now, I had some ideas, yeah, that were maybe okay, but the execution of them were, was just awful. I think, I mean, of course, there was a bunch of bad stuff, but like, I was experiencing like heartbreak for the first time, and you know, girls like they're just feelers, and like. I even like go back and I listen to those songs and I'm like, man, like I've been emotional since I freaking came out of the womb. Like, (laughs) I mean, I'm writing like I thought we were going to get married type shit. I'm like 15 years old. I was very emotional. That's so funny because my wife and I were watching actually last night a a, a, a stand up comedy special. And the, the guy was talking about marriage and uh kind of the difference in in guys and and girls and uh, just to kind of relate it to um you writing really heartfelt really good stuff young 
and poignant things. And I just wrote like tailgate beer drinking, mud slinging, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> but, but the point is, is I guess you guys, uh, it, it's just by nature and it's early on, like, and his point was guys are just surface, everything surface stuff. And he's like, I hate my wife's voice. Not the way it sounds. He goes, just the things she says. <laughs> and he, <laughs> I mean, he's making a joke, obviously, but he goes, but women think like super deep and they think what they're, what they're, what's rolling around up here, it comes out here. And for those not watching, what's rolling around in the brain comes out, you know, verbally is what they're thinking. And it doesn't come out to guys that way. And she, he's like, can you just come out and say some things? Maybe exactly what you mean. And I had the same argument with my wife, like yesterday, prior to us watching that. I'm like, I go, that is not what you said. I swear to God, that is not what you said. <laughs> and she's like, I just told you that you never listened. And, and so the guy makes the point. He goes, he goes, all right. So we've been together. We've been married 17 years, which is exactly what my wife and I've been married. He goes, everything you say everything you've always told me these things that i don't remember you telling me and i'm i'm going over <laughs> anyway i'm i'm getting us off track a little bit but my point is and i don't know that i articulated it very well but my point is i don't care if you're 15 14 15 18 or 40 uh and talking to my dad who's 67 uh even maybe that age like guys and girls just think differently. And, and, um, so that's a, you know, another example of that is you're writing really poignant, deep things at 15 years old. And I'm, I'm writing about Bush light. Beer you know, and truck and heat up on the dashboard. I love it. Well, it probably has a little to do with who your influences were at that time too. Who, whatever you were probably listening to just, they were probably saying similar type things. Probably. And P PB yeah. was listening to Taylor. Yeah, that's true. Crying that's on point. her guitar. So, but it's more yeah. so PB's that like, I'm, I'm a cry on my I'm guitar too. I'm, I'm pretty much a barbarian uh, and we all, <laughs> but you're right. Are. You're right too. Yeah. But there's, I, I believe, but there, I think it's a combination probably a little bit for everybody on all that, but but uh but yeah so so pb so that throw went, us off topic there no no <laughs> You're good great point for sure but pb so writing those uh much more poignant songs than justin was writing at that age um what what was Hell, the she still is yeah <laughs> still is beer truck uh, <laughs> heartbreak no, beer, heartbreak truck. Kiss my butt. <laughs> okay. uh, what was the steps from high school to getting you to nashville how did that transition happen so yeah i when i started writing i think that like even my mom was like whoa like you there's something here um and i really I don't, I don't think I was a bad student, but like, I was never going to be the girl that went to college, like, and did the whole like doctor thing or like, I mean, I probably couldn't. Um, I thought you were going to say, I, I mean, I probably could. Yeah. Hey, I thought that well, was yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, that's the confidence we need. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I fell in love with songwriting. And I would go, you know, that guy, Johnny Orr, would let me come to his shows and, and play those songs. And <clears throat> um, I I think once I realized that I could actually write good songs, I was like, I'm going to move to Nashville. And He would uh, let you go play your originals? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and they would you, work up an rare. arrangement for it? Yeah, they, they would just hop in or he would just like give me the stage and I would just be me and my guitar and at that point I'm learning how to perform for the first time and uh so I yeah I I decided I was like you know what I was I would follow like again back to the Taylor Swift thing and I know that like whatever it's she's influenced a lot of people but I'm like what is she doing like how did she get from her hometown to like the biggest freaking star in the world right now. Like what, right. what is she doing? And I'm like, I need to get to Nashville. So I basically packed all my stuff up right as I, right when I finished high school and I moved all my shit to Nashville. I didn't know one person. I packed up my Chevy Malibu and 
moved to town and just started the hustle. And boy, was it. <laughs> I mean, that was 2014. So almost 10 years ago. Wow. And it sounds and like. Um... Go ahead, JR. Well, I was going to say that, you know, supportive parents, both y'all have that in common too. That's that's exactly what I was going to bring up was it sounds like your parents were uh, really supportive of, of that move and, and you pursuing this. And I'm, I don't have to tell you this, but I mean, that's, that's rare, you know, like if most people back home, you know, where I'm from, they were pulling for me, but they were like, yeah, go ahead, pal. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this yeah. guy's crazy. This guy's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. It's, you know, but I mean, they were in all seriousness, they were pulling for me, but they were like, I mean, I don't think that happens to people like us around here, but I mean, I hope he pulls it off, you know. And my parents were like super supportive. You know, I'm just thinking now, my daughter is 13, about to be 14, my oldest daughter. And I'm like, in four years, if she told me I'm going to move to Nashville and try to be a, an actress or a singer or something, I'd be like, you're nuts. <laughs> like, no, you're not. You're not going to do that. Yeah. You know? I, so, <laughs> like, you know, now being a parent, and which I know you're not yet, but, um, I mean, that's just a crazy thought to me. I mean, I mean, I still, I mean, JR, you know, like, can you imagine yep. Ella? four years from now moving by herself to Nashville. I mean, that's I would, just, un, it's I unfathomable. Couldn't imagine, I couldn't like, imagine anybody moving to Nashville now, but uh, well, yeah, now I'm just saying though, like, like yeah. so we Crazy. were very fortunate is my point. You and I both to have parents that supported us. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's unique and rare. Yeah. I, I learned a lot from my parents and I think that like, I mean, I didn't grow up with money. I didn't grow up right. with my parents were like, if y'all want to go to college, y'all, you're, you're going to put yourself through college and we'll be there to, to, you know, cheer you on throughout the whole, the way. But even me moving to Nashville, like I didn't, they were there to be like, all right, go get it. You know? And, and my dad's a hard worker. He'd never like, I mean, he would work any odd job in the world to make sure we had food on our table. And mm -hmm. I think that like just having that like hustle mentality, like growing up around that, like if you want shit to happen, go make it happen. Cause yeah. no one's going to work harder than you. And if you think that they are, then you shouldn't move to Nashville. Like, mm -hmm. right. And, and so it was cool. Like, I'm sure that they were scared shitless. I mean, I showed up to Nashville and I found two roommates on Craigslist and did you know I, anybody at all when you moved no, there? No. Not a soul. No. Wow. First week that I moved to Nashville, I get robbed. Like oh, it wow. was like from I hear that a lot. to actual worse. Yeah. I mean, Let's seriously. See, and that's a, that's the thing. I mean, I was I'm assuming you were 18 if you had just graduated high school. I was 17. Okay. And so I was 18. I, I'd moved the same situation. I, I graduated in, in May of 02 and I moved there in September, October. And I was terrified, but it, you know, and I'm not to sound sexist. I don't have to tell you that I'm saying that for other people, but like, there's a difference in a guy at 18 moving to Nashville by himself and a, and a girl. I mean, there just is, yeah. you know, I, and, and so I can't even imagine as a parent, my daughter. And then, but I, and I knew one person, I knew my manager, Pete, who, you know, yeah. And so I can't imagine moving there, not knowing a soul. And then the first week I'm there, get robbed. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. It, I mean, it was a journey. I, I had no clue what I was doing. I mean, seriously, I'm like, how do you even meet people? And I've never had right. a problem meeting people. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. I'm 17. I can't get into the bars. I can't. Right. I'm like going to church and me dry. I'm like, I'm like, dad, I'm going to church. He's like, well, that's amazing, honey. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I want to meet some people. Okay. So, so what did you do? Cause I know for me, you know, I had an ally there in my manager so he, you know, whether it be feed me dinner or we go play golf or, you know, I got a normal job, you know, there 
um, and just started working. I met people through that, but I mean, like there were some 18 and up bars there, but they weren't the like meet people bars for the business. I mean, and that really wasn't my scene at that point anyway. So, um, you know, I, I at least had somebody I could call to be like, can I come over for dinner or whatever? Like, so what did you do? Did you get a job or, I mean, well, well, I know, I we, well, I know we heard about one of them the other week and I, I want to make sure we tell that story too. One oh of your gosh. jobs. Which one, which one of them? Cause they were all pretty sketchy. Well, the, hey, this one didn't seem too sketchy. This might've been one of your jobs before you hit right before you hit, because when you were receiving your plaques and everything for oh, yeah. you, me and whiskey the other week, oh, when we yeah, were all in yeah. Nashville, you, you BMI. dropped it on us that BMI. you used to work at BMI where you received the awards in the same place where you used to work. Yeah. It, I know. That's so weird. I'm still, Which, that's a great for any aspiring musicians out there. I think JR, I think you've pointed this out a number of times, like BMI, ASCAP, any publisher, any late go there and work. Yeah. If you can get William a Morris, there, mail I mean, room, can, get in the mail. That's the best somewhere. place to meet people, you know, yeah, yeah. At the, at a lawyer, uh, any, any kind of anything to do with the business. Yeah. A yeah, venue, no. whatever. I wish I would have known that earlier on. Cause I worked at BMI, <laughs> you know, before everything kind of happened. But I mean, I worked like, I'm telling you, like I went from being a nanny and yes, people did pay me to watch their kids, which is scary. I was watching people's kids. <laughs> I was the neighborhood dog, dog walker. I would find shit on the side of the road. Mm. I am not even kidding you. This was the best job. I would find shit on the side of the road and I'd sell it on Craigslist. And I would go to like apartment complexes, find tables with four working chairs. And I'd be like, oh, a hundred bucks. Would I'd, I'd repaint shit, sell it. I'd call like any like dudes that I knew with like a truck. I'd be like, hey, like, uh, can you help me? Like, I'm on the side of the road right now. And I found this like chair and I think, and they're like, oh, there she goes. But like anything, I. Hustler. Yeah. Um, but really what changed everything for me, I was working at a yogurt shop in Hillsborough Village and I was basically nine to fiving it. I was also going to Nashville State. I'm like, man, maybe I should like try to learn something about the music business. So I was taking music business classes. So I would work from nine to five at the yogurt shop. So and were then, you not, you weren't ever riding with anybody else at this point? This is before this you point. met people. This is like my first full year. This is my first full year. Okay. I'm like. And if you're an aspiring artist for just for the, the people listening, Priscilla, I think you'll agree with me. If you're. Monday through Friday or Saturday or whatever, nine to five in it. You feel like, what the hell am I doing with my life? I'm yeah. wasting so much time going to this damn yogurt shop. Yeah. And I ain't writing any songs. I ain't met nobody. I, I at least that was my perspective because I did the same stuff. And I'm, you're going, why am I not just home? I mean, this is yeah. stupid. Like, I'm doing the same thing I could be doing at home. I could actually be making more money at home. And I don't feel like I'm progressing my career at all. I mean, I have no career, but I don't feel like I'm getting any closer to my goals. I, that was my perspective, at least. Yeah. I mean, I, it, I, I was like that. I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? I mean, seriously, like, yeah, I just exactly trying to keep. Like, I wanted to, like, prove myself, like, prove it to myself that I could do this, but I'm like, where's the guy? Where's, like, the guy that I prove it to? We could he yeah. please show up. Yeah. Well, I'll <laughs> tell you what that guy was. I was working at that yogurt shop and I, like I said, worked nine to five and then I'd rush over to Nashville State to get to class. And I was le I called my sister that day and I was like, I think I'm going to go. I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing here, but I need her like a regroup might come home. She's like, Priscilla, like if you come back, like you haven't failed, like, you know, let's, let's just figure it out. I'm leaving work that day. Is she older or younger than you, by the way? She's older. Okay. I am leaving work that day. And by chance, I was wearing a Taylor Swift t-shirt. And Taylor Swift was driving by and saw me. 
Oh, wow. Pulls her car over. Hops in. She's driving herself. I walk out. I need to run to get to my car to get to class on time. She pulls over, jumps into her passenger seat, parks the car on the side of the road, opens up her, sh- her door and was like, I love your shirt. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I'm like <laughs> looking at her. I'm like doing a double take. I'm like deer in headlights. And she's like, come here, you know, whatever. Like, what the heck is going on right now? Yes. And she's like, you know, what are, what are you doing? I was like, I don't I just finished work. Like, I never told her I did music um oh no really no I I just looked at her and I said you have no clue how much I needed this today like this is Kara actually just holy this is a picture of us look wow and that's that's crazy crazy and that was the moment in time I said I'm quitting my job I'm quitting school this is a year after I've been in Nashville and I'm gonna go figure this shit out because that does not happen all the time like and so I freaking threw the towel in. I was like, I got a fake ID. I got, uh, I, I, I mean, this is, yeah. I don't know if I'm giving good advice or bad no. advice. This is what I did. I got a fake ID. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. Exactly. I got a fake ID, uh, quit school, quit that yogurt shop gig, started selling shit on the side of the road. Not my body. No worries. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm not to working. I mean, I would walk into these bars. I would be like, my name's Priscilla Block. Like, and I would go into these, like, r- you know, in Nashville, they're called writer rounds and they're the little shows where everyone's saying their songs and why they wrote them. Like I would the Bluebird that- and all that kind of stuff. Well, a lot of them just De- Demumbrian, like Tin Roof, uh, yeah. all those like little areas. And uh, I would take notes in my phone and I'd be like, Justin Moore, this song. And then I would come back and I wouldn't say anything the first time, but I would know I would listen to when they were playing next. And I'd go go like the next week and watch them and be like, hey, I saw you last week at Tin Roof. I love this song. I just just so it's not like so there, you know, too fast. And I was like, right. this song that you played, I would love like I'm brand new to Nashville. Like I would love to to write sometimes. So I just started the networking hustle. And wow. uh my guitar player, Sarah Jones, um, had moved to Nashville from North Carolina and, you know, our brothers were best friends growing up and she's four years. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. We grew up in the same neighborhood. Oh, wow. Wow. I didn't know that. She, she was going to college when I was going to high school. So we never like really hung out and her brother kind of missed each other. Yeah. Yeah. And her brother was like, Hey, Sarah's moving to Nashville. Um, y'all should connect. And so turns out I needed a roommate. I was tired of my Craigslist roommates. And I was like, hey, girl, do you need a roommate? And she was like, yes. And so we started writing songs in our empty apartment just on the floor. And she really was like a big, um, just like a key person in my life at that time where I was figuring out my voice. I was figuring out, you know, how to co-write. We were both learning from each other. And, uh, you know, and that, that grew to, she kind of looked at me one day and she was like, so like, what do you want to do? Like, like, where are you, you, where are you wanting to go with this? Are you wanting to be a songwriter? Are you wanting to be an artist? And I was like, oh, I want to be an artist. And she was like, well, like, where, like, how big are we talking? Like, are you wanting Mm -hmm. to, and I was like, oh, I want, I want to be the next Carrie Underwood. And she goes, she looked at me and she was like, well, I have a piece of advice for you. She was like, you need to put that guitar down. And she's like, you need to learn how to perform because I was hiding behind this guitar for so long. That's how I, that was like my comfort. And that's how right. I, was, I was just writing these songs. And it was just like me, like trying to be Taylor Swift. Right. And, and she was like, so you need to learn how to perform. And I put my guitar down for an entire year. And Sarah started playing she's like i came out here to be a songwriter i'll write songs with you i'll sing harmony and i'll play guitar you learn how to perform and so we started playing shows together and she i wouldn't pick up my guitar and i was just learning how to move on stage and if you've been to a show i move a lot like yeah but i think that's great foresight on her part i mean to recognize that that early on so this is probably 15 16 is that 
Mm -hmm. something in that range. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's that's really good uh, advice and foresight on her part. And, you know, I think she um, really believed in me and was like, you're a natural. I mean, there's some people, um, you know, maybe you hadn't done it yet at that point um in that capacity but but you're a natural i mean I, i'm of the belief singing wise and now you can take lessons to learn to breathe correctly and but you can either sing or you can't sing to mm-hmm. me that's my opinion um you can't take my wife and make her you know <laughs> kelly clarkson it just ain't gonna happen. <laughs> i don't care there ain't no amount of lessons she can get um Kelly Clarkson could blow, but, buddy. Woo. Oh, she oh, yeah. Saying, yeah. But <laughs> I'll never be Kelly Clarkson. Right. Like, that's, 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 that's a tough one there. But 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 I yeah, mean you're like, right. I and think I think so the too. same for for um you know entertaining. I mean, you kind of have that or you you're kind of born with it or you're not. I mean, I, I I believe anyway, that's my opinion, but but you certainly you have it. And you know, I'm sure you found that out and and once you once you dropped the guitar and and kind of went side to side and kind of found your things to turn the audience on you can take them to a different level where you're like wow that okay that's pretty cool you know and and so i i know you do both you play guitar and put it down now and I, i'm kind of the same way i i enjoy both aspects the older I get, the more I just want to, and this is not out of a comfort thing. This is more just being lazy. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm I'm slowly trying to morph into George Strait and kind of his love it. on stage. Just stand deal. there and let the stage <laughs> turn, do all the work for you. Just, exactly. Yeah, I, just, I don't have his Wrangler ass or his smile. Uh, <laughs> well, I think you've earned 900, it. Justin. 900 <laughs> hits. <laughs> and 900 billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so, no, I, and no, I, you totally and you're right. It. And that was great advice on her part. No doubt. And for you to have an ally from back home that was really talented and you to have that talent already, and y'all be able to grow that together and give yourselves that confidence. She's like, wow, she can really write. She can sing. And you're like, she can play and write. So, oh man, perfect. That was great. And yeah, I, Sarah, for anybody who hasn't met Sarah Jones yet, she's awesome. She plays guitar and piano and sings mm. in Priscilla's band. And she's a, just a sweetheart and stellar human being. I had no, and I've known her for a year or so now and had no idea that that was y'all's connection. I knew y'all were buds, but I had no idea that connection. Um, and then now I didn't either. Isn't her husband also a musician or my, no, that he's not. He, uh, I guess he, I made that up. Yeah, no, he's, he's from Alabama. That's what it is. Yeah. Maybe most, that was it. I thought, <laughs> I fact. actually thought one of you guys, Jr. told me that, but I, maybe I'm, dream maybe i thought I maybe i thought so maybe it just i had alabama you were just you were just famous. mesmerized by him because he's from alabama exactly <laughs> had another had another That's ally probably, yeah this is probably part of it yeah. no that she, was probably it she was a big pivotal uh person in my life and you know it's it's crazy like since all of this has happened even like before i mean she really believed in this and was like priscilla if you like want to go get it like we're going to figure it out. I mean, we would sit down in my living room, me, her, Kara, my other, my old drummer, Joe, like we all lived together. Me and Sarah lived together for like six years and we would sit down, we'd be on Pinterest and we're like, okay, branding, like what's the vibe? Like what, where are we going? You can't look like every other girl out there. Like where, I mean, and, and it would just like keep us up at night. Like yeah. I started my own fake booking company and we were 14, 17 booking because we lived <laughs> 14, 17. And so oh, I wow. was Melanie Johnston reaching out on behalf of my artist. For <laughs> blog. I love it. Like, I mean, we're going to shows like losing money, like paying way more to like drive to the damn show than we ever got paid. Oh but, like, yeah. Where you know, did, like, so how'd you come up with who is Melanie Johnston? Is that like an old teacher or something? I don't even know. I knew this girl Melanie and I was like, Melanie sounds sophisticated. So <laughs> I would be like, Hey, my name's Melanie Johnston. I'm reaching out on behalf of my artist, Priscilla Block. Like we would love to have her. And then like, we would show up to the venues. They would be calling. I'm and, speaking out. Like, and, they, and, they were the, 
Kara's when they Melanie call, when once yeah. you get there. And, and when they oh, call yeah. and when they call, you're like, uh, we have to speak with Melanie Johnson. Uh, one moment, please. Hey. <laughs> hey, Melanie Johnson. Oh, I've I've done no. the same I've done that same hustle back in Southern Holler days. Oh yeah, I know that hustle. Oh yeah. We were just 100%. faking it. You you sometimes you literally have to fake it till you make it. And like absolutely you do. I just like you can never this whole process I've I've learned like you're never too cool for something. You're never you know, like you have to knock on every damn door. And I, if you were to tell me 10 years ago, when I moved to Nashville, that girl, you're just going to happen to go viral on the internet. And that's, this is how this whole thing's going to work out. I would be like, what? Yeah. But I look at this whole journey and like my band that's been with me since the beginning, like my guitar player, Jake, we used to go out to Key West and we would pay, play for two weeks. And it was like the I mean, we were just anything that we could to make money and get my name out there. We were doing it. And I, I will tell you, I would show it for cover band gigs, but I would be playing all my own music. And like. Yep. But through all of this, like, I'm just so happy that my journey has been that. And I wasn't just the girl that blew up on the internet because I feel like when this has fine, when this started happening, <laughs> I appreciate all of this so much more, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you guys, y'all saw that at the number one party. Like I still cry. I'm just like, holy crap. Like we did it. And it's been like such uh, years of highs and lows and a lot of lows you know and so that also just, gave you time to get your team assembled too instead of being brand new uh, i don't have a guitar player i don't have an a i don't have anybody to help you know you yeah. already had your you already had a tight team together when it was time to jump and and in addition to that uh, you know you knew who you were as an artist and what you wanted to say and do and again like you said dress like what i mean what's the message you want to send to fans what well, i mean you guys had already had all these converse conversations so you're so far ahead of the curve as far as that stuff goes and you know a lot of a lot of people and i mean to an extent i had an idea musically what i wanted to do but um you know to an extent i was even that way where you go well i'm a i feel like i can sing really good and I've got these songs. Yeah. Here you go. Mold me or whatever. <laughs> you know, you knew going in, which is, which is, you got a leg up there. And yeah. I knew, and I knew I had seen PB on socials and stuff, but hadn't got to meet her yet. And when we finally got to do that acoustic show with her, I introduced myself at sound check. Cause I was kind of the, one of the only tour managers there. I was like, Hey, I wish you would have introduced yourself as Melanie Johnston. I should. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. How can I get on y'all's tour? Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm real Melody Johnson. I keep getting these calls looking for you and I don't know you, but I feel like we better know each other because everybody keeps calling me. But no, I knew that I knew that day during sound check because I went back and told him on the bus because I, I said, yeah, I've been following this girl for a while on socials because she had some cool stuff. Um, and then I was like, man, she's the real deal. I just talked to her and heard her in sound checks, man, she can really sing. She's cool. And then during that show that night, Justin's told this story a bunch because you know, this is where y'all first met to the beginnings of you, me and whiskey becoming a number one country song, uh, in, in the country on the charts, um, that you were up there with a bunch of hitters. It was a bunch of, you know, famous songwriters, Kelly and that bunch. And then Justin and, uh, Lee or chase and other, the artists that were there. And then it was you, one of the newer artists and you held your own. And, and we knew watching that night, it was like, yeah, you, you were comfortable. You had command, you sang your songs and man, you had great songs. Um, so I think like just said, some people just have it and, you know, you wouldn't have known you were a new artist by that performance. And you weren't really because you had been doing the groundwork to get yourself to be able to do those type shows. So it wasn't new to you. You had, you already had it. And, and you, know, you knew what you were doing. The most impressive thing to me was, um, and you're right, JR, by saying performance, but it didn't feel like you were to me like performing. It just felt so comfortable and natural right which in in that in those type of shows and settings to me that's the right Approach. energy to put forward or emotion to put forward it's just kind of almost like everybody's just hanging around or hanging out around a fire or something mm -hmm. and i was just so impressed with your poise and i mean we've had this conversation a hundred times but 
Um, but that came from, I'm sure, you know, all that time you spent doing the two weeks in Key West and the, you know, the different stuff where you go play shows and you don't get paid and you lose money. And that's what it takes to get to that point where, you know, you can, you can do what, what you did that night and what you do every night now. I think everything's like an opportunity and that's really why, like where I try to <laughs> put my mindset, like, you know, we all do shit that we don't want to do sometimes. Like you're like, why are we here? Or, but I'm like, if I can just grab 50 more fans in the crowd, hopefully they're going to go and tell 50 more of their friends. And like, I really try to think about it like that. And I, through all of this, yeah, like, I've spent years trying to really like hone in on like who I am as an artist, but like when everything kind of started happening for me and people were starting to take notice, like who's Priscilla block, real, the fans came before I ever had the label, the booking, mm. the management. And in that time, I feel like all the feedback that I kept getting was like, we just love how real you are. And and I don't say that in a way of like trying to like sound conceited at all. It's just like, no, I think you are. There's a lot of artists that like are put on this pedestal. That's just not freaking real. Right. And I started like posting like who I was on the internet, like funny shit, sad shit. Like I would just put it all out there. And I think that like realizing through that moment, even my years of Nashville, like I tried to sound like Taylor Swift or look like Carrie Underwood or, or whatever. Like mm -hmm. I really think this all started happening when I started being unapologetically myself. Mm -hmm. And I really do try to like, you know, you can, you can get in your head sometimes and, and it's keep, like I said, it's keeping people like Kara around and my band around that keep me grounded. And, you know, it's showing up to those shows and just being real with the crowd. Like people love that shit. And yeah. I've said throughout my career that I, I have had a career because of the same type of deal. And I'm like, everybody ain't going to like it, but yeah. the ones that do are going to be with me. But I've also said, you know, people want to know what you sound like on the radio. They want to know what you look like on TV and all that. But, they before they spend money they don't have to go to a show buy a t-shirt whatever they just want to know who you are mm -hmm. as a person yeah. and again ain't gonna be for everybody but it's you know if you get a, a number of them that that appreciate it and maybe relate to you in some capacity um that's that's where you get lifelong fans in my opinion and and certainly you are that and um that's not to mean that like if you're genuine and you're real you don't you're not somewhat strategic in some things that would be dumb not to be mm -hmm. um you know you have to have a strategy um but with all that kind of stuff being said i'm curious because there's times in the past there's still to this day i come off stage and i go i wish i wouldn't have said that that was I'm going to catch hell over that. Or I wish I wouldn't have said that in front. I, I, there was a little kid on the third row. I, I wish I wouldn't have said, do you ever have those moments? Because you are unapologetically you, as you, as you said, and, um, you know, I mean, cursing on stage and that kind of stuff, which look, I'm the world's worst at that. <laughs> um, but do, do you, as far as strategy goes, do you think about those things and go, maybe I should dial it back or, or this is just who I am, or I'm not saying one thing is right. One, one is wrong. I'm just curious. Cause I have those thoughts at times about myself and I go, that was pretty cool when I did that or not in a boastful way, but you go more so like you go, boy, that works. When I do that, you get a pop from the crowd or, there's also times where I go, uh, I wish I, boy, I wish I wouldn't have said that. That probably wasn't, wasn't good. Or I don't, do you think, yeah. am I making any sense at all? No, do you, you are. Do you have and those thoughts at all? Absolutely. And I think. Because I beat myself up a lot where I well, go, 
you know, I, I'm my biggest critic, I think. Well, I think the reason why that answer is yes is because you care. And I care too. Yeah. Like, if you didn't care, you would, I wouldn't think there's a difference between like caring or like not caring to where I don't give a shit what people think about me. Right. And caring enough to know like how to grow and how mm. to be better. Like I care. Yeah, there hell yeah. There's times that I walk off stage, I'm like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> and even you know, I, I'm learning a lot as as a new artist. Like even even, you know, I think like I'm learning like, hey, I probably shouldn't, you know, I've I've learned this, but I'm like, I shouldn't drink a lot before a show. Like there's mm. things that you learn and I'm happy for the journey. You know what I mean? I'm like, mm. ah, I probably dropped F bomb like five times, <laughs> you know, five times in 30 minutes. Like you I do think one work, of the but... I think one of the first three words you said when they announced you at the uh number one party was an F word. I think one of the first uh, things. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, Listen, I don't know what to F and do, say. I'm so F and happy. <laughs> <laughs> I try to reel it in, but it just sometimes doesn't happen. And fuck is oh. like my favorite word. <laughs> it works. Um well, it, but you it, own it. It the other and when the other thing is some people and you're one of these people in my opinion who you can say uh say that and it's endearing I say it and people want to backhand me uh yeah. for whatever reason no, I don't I'm, have that I don't have usually that in me. and you're usually smiling when you say it that <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh. and you're bouncing around you do, oh, what the hell I'm doing do you do, does your label ever go look Priscilla I mean because no. I my mine I was lucky that i mean there have been times where i remember early in my career i put something really stupid on the internet <laughs> about i don't know if it's twitter or something i uh and my label president called me he's like are you serious and i'm like what he goes what you just posted on twitter i go oh well so and so did so he's like justin just go <laughs> take it down please just yeah. knock it off and I go, ah, I mean, I don't agree, but okay, I'll do it. And yeah. it, but, but there have been a few of those, but, but for the most part, mine, they're like, they just kind of throw their hands up and go, I mean, he is what he is to me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, but I, I'm sure Charlie's life. immune to it at this point. Your F words oh, are just Charlie like, Charlie is <laughs> like <laughs> this girl. I just, you know, keep PR ready. No, but I think it also, so when I signed my deal, I was in a very great spot and I'm so thankful for it. I think because of the years in Nashville, I, I had known who I was at this point. And Cindy, Cindy Mabe set me down and Love was like, Cindy. yeah. And she looked at me and she said, Priscilla, and I'll never forget this moment. She was like, I never want you to change who you are. And she goes, and if anyone in this label tries to tell you that you need to be different or you need to look different or you need to sound different. She was like, don't listen to him. And she's like, I'm learning from you here. And she was like, what people love is that you are who you are. Uh -huh. And uh, so I, I, there's probably things that maybe I, I've said that come out a little different than they should, but I do just, I just, try to keep it real. And again, kind of, I mean, Justin, you've made your career off being real and yeah. people like it. Like, and also when you try to be something that you're not like, if somebody saw me black out on Broadway, no one's going to think twice. Okay. <laughs> if True. someone saw somebody else on Broadway that probably you've never seen even drink, they would be like, Whoa, like this is a huge moment. Let's talk about it. Is this person going to mm -hmm. be canceled? I think I'm just like, now that we live in a world that everyone's getting canceled, I'm like, I might as well just be who I am. So people aren't shocked by like, right. something that comes out of my right. mouth. Or and everyone's a little more desensitized these days than they were even 10 years ago or five years ago. So it's yeah. not, you know, and I mean, they have yeah. curse words on regular public <laughs> television. Yeah. Now, and on, I, now on the radio. Yeah. And, and again, I hope that didn't come out the wrong way. I certainly oh, am no. not saying you should change or, you, or, oh yeah whatever i i'm just curious because i have those thoughts in my head where i'm i'm like fuck yeah that was cool yeah. even though I see, oh. you know or or i go damn it why did i say that no like, i, I definitely you know 
My mom is cringing over there. I, I yeah. got a little too yeah. excited on that. <laughs> it's yeah. good to be aware, though. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know, like if if you go off, say you learn things every single night, things that mm-hmm. work, like you said, with the crowd. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to do that every night. Right. Um, Or things that you're like, eh, like, I just got rambling, probably said some things I shouldn't, you know, like. It's being aware because you know, and the other part of that too, people don't realize, or I think people forget that, like, we're like, we're normal people, we have good days and bad days, and you know, whether it be at home with your significant other or your parents or you know, somebody in your family's sick or whatever, um, or you had a fight with your manager or what, you know, whatever, (laughs) um. Some days are better than others, and you go out there and you got different thoughts popping in your head. Maybe you you just don't feel good, or and so uh, people forget that. And uh, you know we're we're expected to be perfect all the time, which is just not reality. Mm-hmm. And and so um, and now with everybody know, getting a glimpse in all the time too, it's not like back in the day when they don't you know they yeah only you saw used you to could hide times. some of this this nonsense. <laughs> see, you could just not. Oh, they're not on tour for yeah. six eight months. Oh, we had no idea they were doing all this to get straight or whatever the thing was. And yeah. now it's you know people are checking in on you guys every day or two. You know, so yeah. complete change of subject. Have you ever had the opportunity to tell Taylor this story now <laughs> or since um, then? Yeah, I actually did the NMPA awards, uh, which they're literally in like two nights. Um, They were honoring Taylor Swift, I think like two years ago. And they asked if I would kick off the show and do Taylor Taylor Medley. And they were honoring her that night. And so I shared the story. And the next day I got flowers at my house. um, Yes. And was like, hey. Wow, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. So it's cool it's weird like now we're at the same label like it, right. life is just so strange and oh no kidding are you really mm-hmm. yeah which is what so universal universal okay cindy yeah. cindy took over for mike and i I loved working with them back in the day oh. they were the best man tell them i said hello so but we yeah were how label co- mates for oh i'm sorry jr no go ahead i was just saying we were label mates for yeah i don't know a 10 12 I don't know, a lot, a long time, in other words, and that's so, so wild. Um, yeah, it, and my now my oldest daughter is completely obsessed. She likes your stuff too. I told <laughs> you my youngest hey. daughter was singing. I told you my youngest daughter was singing uh, you instead of Taylor, and I was excited about that <laughs> for a number of reasons. One of which is because my oldest daughter does nothing but talk about, sing about, play in a room. Taylor Swift. She's a matter of fact, last week went to, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you got to knock it off. Like, You're it's like, a how little much. much are these it's a little much at this point. Went and watched a movie or something. I don't yep. even understand. I don't even know oh, what the hell she's talking about. Big, large, I, I largest grossing really movie did. in the world. Oh, made right. her own shirt. Made her made own more shirt. money than Barbie. Uh, Crazy. I don't know. I don't even know what we're talking about here. I, nor do I care what we're talking about, but I'm just like, it's like every other word is, ta- I'm like, all right, look, you got to knock it off. Like, for example, I don't know if she Googled this. I don't Now she's a Chiefs fan. I'm too. like, I, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, Ella, I've known Taylor since she was like 13. Like I, she's a kid to me. I, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't, um, and certainly she's done great for herself. I mean, that's an understatement of the century. I'm happy for her, but I'm just like, you got to knock it off. It's enough yeah. uh, already. And, and she, she, so she Googled a picture. I'll have to pull, I'll pull it up and show you. She's like, oh my God, dad. And I'm like, what? And, um, Do I Googled you know a picture. Do who Travis she, Kelsey is? <laughs> oh, and she goes, now he's famous because he's, I'm like, no, 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 no. He's not, he's been way famous. He's, a, he's a future <laughs> hall of fame tight end, maybe the best tight end to ever play the game. So he's been super famous. Like. Before a month ago, sister. So well, let's knock that off right now. I love that. That's a connection oh we didn't God. even know that that Justin was on a label with T, and then that she you her your chance encounter. Yeah, this kept is your what my going, daughter you're on a label now. That's why this is what my daughter uh, <clears throat> sends me. Uh, I don't even know when this game. is. You're like what? We'll, <laughs> we'll, like, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. PB up there watch- next week. We have to watch Taylor Swift's boyfriend. God, Dad, she sends me this. Oh my gosh! There's a 
Wow. Look at the white hat. Kind of a vibe. Yep. Anyway, it. so oh I'm like, That's knock awesome. it off. A, so now like, she you thinks you're even it. more. She thinks you're even more famous. You're finally cool now, Dad. No, I'm finally, finally cool. cool. You know, Justin, you win. Put my microphone back. Yeah, no, I've never been cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I'll tell you a funny story about that. So, the I don't. I haven't I don't understand anything that's going on these days. I mean nothing like as far as technology and all that. Nor do I really want to. Yeah. So I, you know how like you get all this crap on on your bus that people drop off, bring to you at shows, whatever. I say crap, but you know, like little awards for this and that. And you're like, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> You know, maybe you do. I don't. I mean, there's hometown like hero award pictures, and there's all these keys to cities, and I, I mean, you appreciate all of them, but you don't. There's so it's something every day. It seems like. <laughs> well, <laughs> there were two YouTube. I don't know if they're awards. I don't know what they're plaques of YouTube. Something. Yeah. And and um. Uh, my bus drivers, when they dropped me off a few nights ago, go, Hey, do you want these awards? I'm like, I mean, do you want them? Uh, I, you can, I go, I'll take them. I mean, whatever. So I just take them off the, but JR, you know what I'm talking about? You can maybe explain this better. Yeah. Like there's just always stuff. And I'm like, yeah. I'll get it all off at the end of the year off the oh, bus. Yeah. And cause I don't, I, I'm, I'm tired of piling it up in my office and I'll figure it out <laughs> in December or something. My my daughters, 13, 11, and 9, lost their minds over this. I, again, I don't know what it is. Well, I, and I know, and one of them's a YouTube. It was a million streams on YouTube. One of them Cody gave to me for the podcast thing or something, too. There was two of them. They were, uh, I think there were a million stream or a million followers on YouTube I, or something follow, like that. I don't know what it is. I, I have no idea. That's amazing. They're like, they're like Dad, I mean, <laughs> you. <laughs> You, you got one of these? I go, uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, and, and and they're like, do you know how big a deal this is? I'm like, apparently not. No. Uh, they're like, I mean, can, can, I, can I put it in my room? And, no. Matter of fact, we got to put it in the living room so everybody can see it. And I'm like, huh? Like, I, don't, I don't even know what it is. So. Well, know. it's just probably, you know, that you're doing pretty good. Okay. Well, it I don't just, have one it, of those it, yet. So. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, the last 16 years of my career don't matter, but something about YouTube, <laughs> it finally excited my daughters. Like, Dad, uh, do you like, know how many okay. influencers, do you know how many influencers <laughs> have gotten that? And you're like, yeah, oh, exactly. I'm an artist. Actually, please do not compare me <laughs> to a random influencer. Okay. <laughs> right. It was just right. like, okay, sis, whatever. So, yeah, well, take it to your room. I, I got another one on the bus. One of y'all can fight over it. I don't know. Right. <laughs> Well, um, well, this so far this has been one of the best interviews by far we've ever had in the hundred something episodes we've had on the Justin Moore podcast. And PB, it's I didn't probably know. more than likely the best interview you've ever done. Duh. Sure well, I, well I because mean, I have like two of my best friends on this thing. That's right. Okay. There you are. That's right. Thank y'all for not asking me where I was from. Like y'all know your actual well, homework. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Well, and you know sometimes you have to explain things for the audience because there's like I said, there are a few people living under a rock that may not have heard yet, but they're going to be okay. at your show next week, and, and oh, it, you'll, you'll get to meet them in first uh, first hand. But no, that that really was that was one of the best um, interviews we've ever had on here. That was one of the best stories we've ever had on here. Um, and I don't I, since it's been so great, I want to pre warn the rest of this might not be as good. But I want to run through like a short list of a few little questions. We can do them kind of rapid fire. Yeah. Talk about a few things before we get out of here. Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. It's compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. 
Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas, at Central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar. And Instagram, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar. But check us out. It's called This Little Piggy. And uh, see what we got to offer, shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit easyliquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour Jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great. Inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler, because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just, it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an Academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, or you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers, and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. Um, and in no particular order, one we just talked about, so we might as well their football. Uh, you got a college football team? Guys, I really am not, like, one to, like, really talk sports. Like, I'm just there for the alcohol and the party. Love it. I know the feeling. I know the That's where I'm at. I'm like, I'm not talking sports. I'm not talking, like, anything – to separate people from like my vibe or my music, I'm just whatever, not really talking. Copy about. that. All right. Well, off, no, no, no. I'm smarter. Here. Hey, I'm smarter than I look. I, I love it. So, no fantasy football. Uh, I, if you had a barbecue joint, if you had to get one item from the barbecue joint only, what's your one item you would get from a barbecue place? Oof. Well, I love North Carolina barbecue way better than like Tennessee. Um, I'm stunned. I love, yeah, I need yeah. like just pulled pork with like the vinegar base. I love, like it. I love vinegar, re. Alabama's kind of the same. I would say pulled pork if I had to pick one. I'm yeah. going with pulled pork myself. Love it. Good to know. A lot of Texas. I like guys. Carolina I barbecue the best too. Yeah, personally. Yep. Yeah, with the vinegar. Um, yep. Favorite artist outside of country music. Mm. Wow. Uh, I mean Taylor Swift, but. But she she, she was, was country, it, I guess. But now she's, you know, she's who, who or who would be one outside of someone you would think that you would like? Is there a, a, a odd jazz artist or like? I'll give, I'll give you or, an example for me, like it, yeah. it, like something that would surprise people is um, Nora Jones. Got it. I love Nora Jones, and I like yeah. Miley Cyrus rock. I like her newer rock stuff. Okay, um, love. There's they're kind of new, but not really. The band Camino. Love mm. the band Camino. Um, Miley Cyrus is great. I love Cardi B and Megan The Stallion. You know anything like you know Groovy that I can just vibe. like go from country to Cardi. Like that's my vibe. I love, love Eminem. I can listen to Megan The Stallion on mute and like it. 
<laughs> and don't get y'all know I love Keith Whitley, so oh yeah, yeah. that's that. Um, that means I think she's pretty, by the way. Yeah, right. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, <laughs> noted. <laughs> uh, like just like lip reading her songs. That's what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> if, I mean, not uh, that I what, don't like her music. I just I think I like her videos. <laughs> okay, I get it. Um, uh, drink of choice. If you had just had, go in a bar, you can only get one drink. Drink of choice. Jack Daniels. Jack on the rocks. Yeah, or Jack and Coke. Love Whatever's it. free. Yeah, that's what I always yeah, say. Whatever's, like, whatever, whatever, whatever I mean, I'll, th- I'll take beer, I'll take wine, <laughs> like to get whatever you want. Whatever's free, I, that is my favorite drink. Yeah, I'll, I'll take alcohol. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I know Justin's kind of changes. It morphs. He he about he gets about 18 months out of a drink, and then we morph into another. I'm kind of the same year. way, too. Like, sometimes I'm on a vodka kick. Sometimes I'm on a Jack kick, beer kick. Yeah, I you're... really chill with beer kick. Mm-hmm. I suppose change there so often. Yeah, that's right. Um, last one I have, and we'll finish it up with this because I know I've seen you post, and Justin, I don't know if you know, we just got back from an elk hunt uh, out in Colorado. Uh, he texted so me about my my elk. I texted him. I was uh, like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, I was like, "We'll have to hook." I told her, "I said we'll have to set it up. This place would be perfect. It would set it up. Oh, yeah. We'll have to all go. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Or just hook her, her and her crew up. Either way. Oh God." Y'all, y'all would love it. it would be a hoot. If she don't want to go with like, us. Oh, Lord. No, <laughs> Probably I had enough of us. I don't want to go with y'all. <laughs> uh, but if you're hunting or fishing. If you I'll had to go, go and guide. I'll go and guide her. I'll okay. We should do a whole that, episode. That, that would be fun. Justin guiding me on a hunt. That would be fun. That, that would be a good so time. Funny. Kara, uh, would, Kara would have her uh, binoculars backwards trying to say, I don't see them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Kara, she's like, I want to go duck hunting. I'm like, uh okay like let's start with some clays like we'll start there um hunting every day what what uh what what's your fave to go hunting that's a hard one because i know you turkey hunt you deer hunt yeah turkeys obviously i think that's just so much fun but i mean recent recently i got into duck hunting and that's just like a good time like you can drink, you you know I'm loud as shit. So like yeah, you can be you can loud, talk, you can talk, you're eating, yeah, exactly. drinking. Um yeah. gosh, but I, I don't know if there's more of an adrenaline rush than killing a big buck. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't know. I like it all. If I had to choose one, probably duck hunting. Duck hunting, the duck hunter. Did you play duck hunt on Mario or Nintendo? But that was what no, it was probably way before I, her time. I was yeah. deprived as a child. I never had a Nintendo. Oh, well, you get a, you get you a Nintendo now. You get oh, okay, your PS5 if you want that now. <laughs> but yeah, well, we had a good time on our on our uh, elk hunt this past week in Colorado, and it was beautiful. I don't know about you, Just, but my legs are still sore. My legs and oh butt from walk, cl- hiking yeah, it these was, mountains. Um, it was, um, yeah. I, I'm still. I'm. St- I'm just now <laughs> coming out of my entire body being sore yeah dude, yeah. i am so jealous like yeah. i that is like dream i want to go on an elk hunt so bad it it was a blast I, i've been on i think that was my fifth or sixth and that's only the second one i've 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 got wow. uh so i don't know if that's the typical percentage or i'm just <laughs> i'm good for like 33 percent of the time getting one <laughs> well and it was but, it was weird but this it was week. A, it was a tough hunt though it's hard but it was it was rewarding it was uh i mean jr can tell you it was a lot of work but yeah that's the way you want it you know you oh, want yeah. you want to earn it so and, it's the, good. and the place was nice uh, a friend of ours had just bought this <laughs> ranch the muddy uh muddy creek ranch and um <laughs> he, he had some fantastic uh chefs there cooking food for oh, us which gosh. was unbelievable Ridiculous. Uh, but no, we had, we, we went out and we had Cody who, you know, Cody V who does yeah. Justin's videos on our management team, um, there with us. And, uh, they both had bull tags and I had a cow tag, which not a cow, cow, a cow elk, uh, yeah. it just doesn't have horns. But, um, so the first, uh, second or second day, I guess it was Cody, uh, shot his and, uh, Justin had his white cowboy hat on for good luck. Well, then as a couple of days went by, we had done some, you know, morning hunts and afternoon hunts we're hiking. We see a bunch, but we can't. You know, they're so far away and you're trying to walk mountains to get an angle on them. It's just some wild hunt. It's not sitting in a tree stand like it is here, what we're yeah. used to. But uh then finally the last day, Justin put on a baseball cap, say, Oh, I gotta try to get a new luck hat. That one's not not was not producing this this trip. And um 
Justin told the guys before we got out, I think it was for the morning hunt or on the way back to the morning hunt. He said, guys, I don't know. It might just be a thing with me, but the last time I shot one was literally 10 minutes before it was too dark to shoot. He said, I'm just, so I'm just on the last that, day, on the last day. That, just, sure that enough, sounds like something you would say, like, yeah, right, yeah. you know, we need good vibes here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's and like, that's it's literally going to happen. <laughs> it was the truth, happen. but yeah. And then that's exactly it, what happened with about 30 minutes left. Just, yeah. We got it. We, we had hunted hard all day. I mean, up and down some mountains. I mean, it was wild. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and then we chased and finally Justin got an angle on one and at 300 and something yards and they got it. He and our friend Frank took off to get it. And the two guys said, come on, we're going to find yours. And we come over a hill and they're like, they're like, oh, here we go. We get down and get ready. Tell her how like, long how you shot yours at. Yeah, well, the first when we first got down and I had this a, is some of us shot a one. They said, uh, "I said, how f I'm trying to whisper, you know, like, how far?" They're like six hundred. I'm like, "Shit!" <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah. "They're like, you don't feel comfortable." I'm like, "Well, I mean, if I can get a shot, I'll, I'll do it." Well, and then she got behind some trees and a fence, and I couldn't get a good one. They were like, "All right, let's try to get up closer." So we got up, and I didn't know how far up close. Seven we were, feet finally, closer. <laughs> yeah, right. If, yeah, exactly. Five hundred in. And so, and then I ended up taking the shot, took her down, all that it was 539 yards. And I mean, I had only shot a rifle this year, like two days before that to sight in the other rifle that I didn't even yeah. end up shooting, uh, and, and pulled it off. But it was, it was 10, by the time she went down, it was 10 minutes left and it was getting dark. It was just a yeah. last second thing, but it was kind of cool because after that, it was just completely still and quiet out there. The, the, the stars and the skies changing. We're out there in, you know, South of Pueblo, Colorado, uh, yeah, it, was it was just cool. really, it was really special. And then by the time we got back to the bunkhouse that night, it was like, you know, job of course, we're all like a bunch of like seven year old kids. Get like, what? <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, and then the once home. you do it after it's yeah. been like a couple days and you're like hiking and you're so freaking tired when it happens, you're like, you almost want to cry. You're like, holy yeah. crap. I couldn't yeah, even eat. I'm I was so, so jealous. Like, I want to cool. go so bad. My nerves were like shot. I was just like, oh, I couldn't even eat for like, you know, oh, you know it was wild, but it was beautiful. Yeah. It was, it was awesome, but we'll have to set that all up. And then, um, we'll Please. have to, since you, you like duck hunting now, Justin lives in Arkansas where they have the, the most ducks to hunt. So, um, hey. we'll have to get you over there at some point, uh, during the season yeah. and, um, hook up with some of our buddies and we'll go hunting with you over there or something. It'd be fun. Well, thank y'all so much for doing this. It's good to see y'all and I'll see you guys this weekend. We're so yes. Oh, is that, yes. uh, we, we together this weekend? Yep. Yep. It's our last, uh, I think it's our last All weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. That's awesome. I'm, I don't, I'm not sure what day this will podcast will come out. Cause Cody's actually still in Nevada, uh, hunting with his sister and mom this He's week. Deer deer hunting. Hunting. Yeah. But, uh, if this does come out in time, uh, this week, uh, October 26th, uh, Justin Priscilla along with Noah Hicks on the, you, me and whiskey tour, uh, we'll be in Dothan, Alabama. We'll be in Estero, Florida on the 27th and Melbourne, Florida on the 28th of this month. I don't have to play you, me and whiskey by myself. I, I know something. I'll be there. Yay. It's gonna be so I, uh, with... also i'm i'm bringing out a rider that weekend from nashville so if we want to oh, nice. we want to ride at any Try point to get yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, hey we need to ride another number one there okay you go. bingo and y'all get like the publish it. It, and y'all get the publishing on this one hey and we get the publishing on this yeah one. no joke no joke well hey seriously thank you we love yeah. you appreciate love you, guys. you um and uh we'll see you here in in a couple of days okay all right. All right. Something like that. Thank Bye, you, guys. PB. Safe travel. Bye. Bye. Soon. Tell my tell my buddy, hey. I will. I will. Bye, guys. Right. See Bye. ya. Well, that was the the oh so talented and cool and charismatic uh Miss Priscilla Block. Man, that was a great one, wasn't it, Jess? Yeah, that was good. That was a lot of fun. I mean, we've been meaning to have her on for a year, I guess, or something I like know. that. And um and we only we have limited amount of these left to do for the year and so we're trying to um i know they've been infrequent but we, we're trying to get a guest like that each time for the rest of the year so um sorry they're not as frequent as but which we told you guys they wouldn't be this year but uh um uh, but yeah we're trying to make all of them good ones and that was certainly a, a great one good absolutely to, to yeah her, her story was her story was just fantastic. Well, I told you where we're going to be this weekend if this drops in time. If not, uh, y'all have be safe out there on Halloween, which is this weekend. Um, send us some pictures in. 
uh, to the Instagram, uh, Justin Moore Podcast Instagram page. If you got anything cool and reference to country music or anything, Arkansas or anything we're into, send us that uh, for Halloween. Um, and yeah, we'll try to get a podcast in next week sometime for you guys Wait, and gals. If nothing else, JR. Maybe we can just come on and maybe have Cody jump on and uh, we can talk about our, our hunt yeah uh next and we, week because we we kind of touched on it but we didn't really get into the meat and potatoes of it so right maybe and then can, uh do that and yeah and we've also still got to uh we've got some funny stories from the ronnie Millsap uh last nashville oh, show God. we were at a few weeks ago that were pretty good um but There's next one week, story i've told multiple times uh i don't know that we can tell it on here or not to your buddies yeah that confirm you that know confirm what I'm that confirmed what I told you earlier. The yes, day. yes. And we were yes. both, and you were like, "Really?" I'm like, "That's what yes. I heard." And then confirmed with two two yeah, words. Sorry to be so cryptic out there for you guys, <laughs> yeah. but I, I we'll have to. I don't know if we can tell this one or we can't, but we'll 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 see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll get some intel and see if we can tell it. We'll, we've got a lot of good ones there though, because we were hanging yeah. out with Randy Hauser, and you know he's always a good time. Uh, and my buddy Mike Diamond was there, and then it was just and my buddy Jesse Keith Whitley. And it was just a slew of <laughs> of the the normal hitters at these uh, kind of shows, and a few um, in misfit. <laughs> yeah and a few cool ones that i hadn't got to do los lonely's boys was there band of heathen and was how there. good were they oh wow. so good and then uh good. the highlight for me meeting ray stevens we'll have to tell all we'll tell about him you know but um but we'll, we'll we may do that next week but then next week show wise we're going to be in indiana pennsylvania on the second toledo ohio on the fourth uh and then in november uh, the 17th will be in midland texas the 18th in norman oklahoma uh and then new on our calendar december 8th we're going to be at resort worlds in las vegas for the nfr uh week there so uh y'all check out justinmoremusic.com you can get all the updates to all those shows how to get tickets meet and greets all that fun stuff and uh, for the first time ever new year's eve we've yes, never we, played new year's we eve we do and if if no, nobody's if you haven't signed up for it yeah the easy way to get any information on our touring uh any new album music anything really is the justin moore text line that we've got set up the number is 501 200 4050 that's 501 200 4050 uh you could send hashtag shows hashtag meet and greets whatever info you need um or just want to drop us a line you can use that as well i'm at jr the handler on instagram and twitter that's at justin cole moore on instagram and twitter like i mentioned earlier we have the instagram page at justin moore podcast as well y'all hit us up on all those um and until next week this has uh, been a great time with priscilla block justin moore jr the handler uh, here on the Justin Moore podcast, y'all uh, make sure to tell your friends. You can watch us on YouTube. Hit the click, like, rate, subscribe, anything you can click on there. Comment. Except for ne yeah, comment, all that. Five stars, good no negative. Yeah, good ones, <laughs> no negativity. Keep it positive. Keep it positive. Uh, but until then, we'll see y'all. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. Thanks, everybody. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 100, Profit and Loss. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Mark 8.36 to me, the Bible verse above is one of the most poignant, practical, and plain spoken in the entire book. It's a cut to the chase question that sums up so much of scripture in one sentence. As a stark synopsis of beliefs, morality, faith, and living, it should be the bottom line guide for every decision we make, every goal we seek, and the way we choose to live our lives daily. Approaching the end of one's time on earth is the most serious stretch of path of life we've chosen. We realize that the riches and pleasures of the world mean nothing. It will be our most fervent desire to walk those last few steps with a clear conscience, confident that we have forgiven and that we are forgiven. Nothing else will matter. Every day we are allotted on this earth is a day we will account for when we stand in eternal judgment. Now is the time to make preparation. Let's all make the day count.